I was proud of this photo. I really, really was. But if you look closer, see all that multicolored speckling in the background? That's noise. I hate that. And this faint red smudge over here, that's supposed to be a nebula, but you can barely even see it. For years, my trusty DSLR was my astrophotography workhorse. It's versatile. I know how to use it. And I've got some shots with it that I genuinely love. So I'm not saying don't use a DSLR. Absolutely not. But this, this right here is the wall I kept slamming into. I spent over $1,000 on a dedicated cooled astronomy camera to finally break through this wall. And while the pictures I can get now are on a whole other level, the journey to get there was rather difficult and I was not really prepared for this. I just thought I'd change over to an astro camera and there, you know, I'd be off and running. Not so. Let me show you what really happens when you decide it's time to upgrade from a DSLR camera to an astro camera. When you're first getting into astrophotography, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera is the perfect place to start. It's a system you probably already know. Perhaps you already have a camera at home. And it's pretty easy to buy a second-hand cheaper camera to get started. Also, you've probably got a battery, a memory card, and a screen on the back to see what you're doing. My setup was beautifully simple. A star tracker to follow the sky, camera, and a telescope that cost me merely $250, $300. I could be set up and shooting in about 15 minutes. It's totally self-contained, portable, and honestly, a joy to use. You could take it anywhere, and it just works. That's the comfort zone. Then I learned something. I learned about dedicated astronomy cameras. The promise is very simple. With an astronomy camera, you should get cleaner, more sensitive images with more detail. The reality starts the second you open the box. You pull it out, and the first thing you notice is, wait, where's the screen? There's no battery slot. There's no memory card slot. And in that moment, you realize this isn't a camera upgrade. This is a complete teardown of your entire workflow. This camera does absolutely nothing by itself. It's basically a scientific instrument that needs an external brain to even turn on. That means, at a minimum, you now have to bring a laptop or a little computer like an ASI Air out into the field with you. And that's not optional, it's mandatory. The camera literally cannot take a single picture without a computer or PC. So just like that, my simple, elegant 15 minute setup was gone. My new reality was a dizzying web of cables. You need a USB cable from the AstroCam to the computer for data. Then a separate 12 volt power cable, which by the way, wasn't included in the package when I bought my ZWO camera. So I had to find a cable and this power cable is just for the camera's cooling system. So that's another hidden cost for you. Then you've got the guide camera, which is another USB cable. The computerized mount, another cable. All of a sudden, I'm not an astronomer anymore. I'm a cable management technician sitting in a dark field or in my backyard trying to figure out why one of the five USB devices refuses to connect. And don't even get me started on the software. With my DSLR, I just used a simple little remote to start taking pictures. With the AstroCam, however, you're thrown into the deep end with programs like Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, or the one I actually use, which is Astrophotography Tool. Now, these tools are incredibly powerful, but for a beginner, it feels like being handed the keys to a space shuttle. You are trying to figure out imaging sequences, plate solving, autofocus routines, and something called dithering. It's a steep, and let's be honest, often frustrating learning curve. 
but one we all need to go through. I went through it and, and I'm out the other end. And I'm so happy to be there. This was the first hurdle, the real culture shock of the upgrade that nobody warns you about. That price tag on the camera, that's just the entry fee. The real cost is all the extra gear and the hours you'll spend learning a completely new way of doing things. After a week or so of trying to get everything ready, I finally had my new setup with my new Astro Cam ready to go. And I pointed it at the same target that I was struggling with, with my DSLR. This was the Wizard Nebula. This is where I was going to test the Astro Cam and find out if it was actually worth the amount that I'd paid for it. So I decided that I would look at two things. I would look at the cooling and I would look at the sensitivity and the overall image should look a lot cleaner because the main problem I was having with when I was using my DSLR was the noise because of the heat. It was the middle of summer. Your camera's sensor generates heat just like any other piece of electronics does. During those minute long exposures, the heat creates something called thermal noise. It shows up as a grainy, blotchy pattern and horrible bright little colored speckles were all over my image. And it, it, it really was a mess. DSLRs have no way to fight this except to just let the sensor cool down between shots. Dedicated astro cameras, on the other hand, have active cooling built in. Think of it like a tiny refrigerator bolted to the back of the sensor. It actively pulls heat away, keeping the sensor at a stable freezing temperature, sometimes as low as 40 degrees Celsius below air temperature. I, I was normally using my cooling set to zero degrees. And more recently, I've knocked it down to minus five. I reckon this is enough to lower the noise quite a bit. To put this to the test, I took images of the Wizard Nebula with my new camera and compared it with those I'd taken with the DSLR. And the result was nothing short of absolutely staggering. The raw image from my DSLR was a complete mess. It was contaminated with a nasty magenta glow and thousands of hot pixels. The image from the cooled Astro camera set to a frosty zero degrees while the outside temperature was something like about 35 or 34 was just clean. It was smooth, dark and almost totally free of those ugly artifacts that I had in my DSLR camera image. This without a doubt is the single biggest game changer in my astrophotography journey so far. With a cooled camera, you can take perfect calibration frames as well. We call them dark frames that let you remove any remaining noise almost perfectly, which is way harder to do with a DSLR because you need to take them at the same temperature that you took the image. And the temperature is always changing through the night. And it means that at the end of your session, you need to immediately take those darks. With an astro camera, you can take them anytime. Next, sensitivity, specifically to the most important color in space, hydrogen alpha, which normally appears red. So many of the most beautiful nebulae, like the North American Nebula, the Wizard Nebula, the Rosette Nebula, and many others, are just giant clouds of glowing hydrogen gas. And they glow in this red light called H-alpha. The problem? Your standard DSLR is designed for taking pictures of your cat, not nebulae. So it has a built-in filter that intentionally blocks out most of that valuable red light to make daytime colors look more natural. A dedicated AstroCam has no such filter. It's built to be a photon sucking machine across the whole spectrum, especially in that critical H-alpha region. So again, I took exposures of a nebula rich area with both cameras. That was the wizard nebula. The DSLR photo showed some faint red, but it was weak and washed out. In stark contrast, the astro camera's image was packed with vibrant, detailed clouds of glowing red hydrogen. It wasn't just a little better, 
it was a night and day difference. It felt like I was seeing the nebula in its true colour for the very first time. That's because these cameras not only skip that restrictive filter, but their sensors also have a higher quantum efficiency, which is just a fancy way of saying they're fundamentally better at turning light into a picture. And hey, if you're getting into the technical weeds like this is actually helping you figure out your own astrophotography journey, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and like this video, please. It really helps me. I'm always testing new gear and sharing the real world results, the good, the bad and the frustrating. Your support helps me keep doing these deep dives. Now let's see how all this comes together in the final image. Collecting all that data in the field is only half the story, of course. The other half happens on the computer during image processing. This is where you stack dozens, sometimes hundreds of those long exposures to build a single super deep and clean image. And if you'd like to find out more about stacking, you can check the links in my description below where you can find another video which I did on this topic and also some information on my website. So I took several hours of data with both my DSLR and my new Astro camera on the same target, the Wizard Nebula. I processed both sets of photos to the very best of my ability. It's time now for the big reveal. Here they are side by side. Look, the DSLR image is not very good, is it? This is the reason why I wanted to get an astrophotography camera in the first place. You can tell what it is. You can see the main shapes and there's some color in there. For a camera that you can also use for birthday parties, it's amazing really what it can pull off. But when you put it next to the image from the de dedicated astro camera, well, the differences are impossible to ignore. The first thing you'll notice is the noise. Even after stacking hours of photos and using noise reduction, the background of the DSLR image is still blotchy and uneven. The background from the astro camera, thanks to that sensor cooling down to zero degrees, it's smooth as silk. This lets all the super faint details of the nebula pop instead of being lost in a noisy mess. The second thing is the color and detail inside the nebula. And here you can see I've actually used my data to convert it to a completely different color format, which is called SHO. And also I have a video about how to use show colors, which you can also see a link to in the description below. Because the AstroCam's sensor is just plainly more sensitive, it picked up on these faint wispy tendrils of gas stretching way out from the main nebula that are completely invisible or just a hazy mess in the DSLR version. Even the stars look tighter and sharper. But here's the kicker, something I didn't expect. The processing itself was actually much easier. The raw files from the Astro camera were so much cleaner to start with that I spent way less time fighting with noise and weird color problems and more time actually bringing out the beautiful details in the nebula. The final image from the Astro cam isn't just better, it was less of a headache to create. So after the frustration, the extra cache, the tangled mess of cables and that learning curve, was upgrading to a dedicated Astro camera actually worth it? The answer, like pretty much everything in this hobby, is it depends. Let's break it down. Who shouldn't upgrade yet? If you're just getting your feet wet, stick with your DSLR or mirrorless camera seriously and get some experience first. Learn the basics of tracking, focusing and processing. If you're someone who loves simplicity and just wants to grab your gear and go, a dedicated camera will feel like a huge step backwards. And if you're on a tight budget, just remember that the camera's price tag is only the beginning. All the extra cables, power supplies, and maybe a new computer can add up fast. So who should upgrade? You should think about upgrading if you feel exactly how I did at the start of this video. You've hit a wall and you're not happy with the image that you're getting. You're trying to shoot faint nebulae and you're constantly fighting noise, especially on warm nights. 
And where I am, I've got a lot of those. You look at your photo and you're just disappointed by the weak faded colors. If you're ready for a new challenge and your main goal is to capture the absolute best data you possibly can, then yes, the upgrade is 100% worth it. It unlocks a level of quality that a regular camera just can't touch. For me personally, even with that initial setup difficulty, the answer was a resounding yes. The upgrade was worth it. The complexity I hated at the beginning has now turned into a powerful automated workflow that gives me total control. And the final images really do speak for themselves. Being able to control the sensor temperature and see all that brilliant hydrogen alpha light has completely transformed what I can capture from my own backyard. It's not an upgrade you should take lightly, and it's definitely not a magic wand for better pictures. It's a real commitment to a more complex, but ultimately more powerful and rewarding way of capturing the universe. It's a specialist tool for a very special task. And if you're serious about that task, it's an investment that truly pays off in photons. Good luck and see you in the next one.